Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is Rob from Islam for Europeans. Uh, this is just a react video um, uh, for those who are uh, familiar with the uh, the digital world. Um, Jordan Peterson is scheduled to have an interview uh, with Sheikh uh, Hamza Youssef uh, on August 5th uh, on his channel, on Jordan Peterson's channel. So um, this is a reaction video uh, to, to that uh, announcement. Um, and also be talking about how that relates to um, I guess the two different sides uh, of the, from the Muslim community who are reacting uh, differently to it. Um, first off, my whole thoughts on the uh, interview, I think it's much needed, it's long overdue. Um, as you are probably aware, Jordan Peterson um, was supposed to um, be at the Reviving the Islamic Spirit Conference in 2017. Um, however, his, um, his appearance was rescinded. Um, we're not sure why, uh, we don't know if it's due to uh, the, act the reaction from uh, Muslims on the left, or from the alt-right, or a combination of the two. Um, in any case, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's it's much needed. Um, there's so much, you know, anti uh, misinformation about Islam uh, that's out there. Um, you know, like it just gets repeated over and over and over again. Everything from saying that you know, uh, female genital mutilation is acceptable in Islam, or um, you know, rape, or um, you know, like assault on non-Muslim women is, is okay in Islam and, uh, and things like that among uh, rightist movements. Things that are just either total lies or maybe they're half-truths um, and the Muslim, Orthodox Muslims never get a chance to, you know, show their side of the story. So, you know, even uh, people on the right, non-Muslims on the right who have positive images of Islam, <laughs> they, they think that these things are actually true, um, but then they'll even, you know, put a positive spin on it. Um, so. Thomas Sowell once said, you know, um, many things are true, you know, many things are believed because they are demonstrably true, um, but many other things are believed simply because they've been asserted repeatedly. So I think that's what's happening here. And, you know, we see this dynamic, you know, occur in the digital world. Um, you know, um, you have tons of, you know, anti-Islam outlets, um, although some have been canceled until recently, like Stefan Molyneux and Sargon of Akkad and God Saad. Um, you know, like, uh, and all your these um, apostate uh, Muslims, like, um, you know, the like apostate prophet, and you know, um, anti-Islam, you know, like um, people like David Wood, you know, they repeat these things over and over and over again. They say, you know, come and you know, come and debate us, and people like Stefan Molyneux will never have a Muslim on their channel. Um, but when Mus when the Muslims who do have, you know, a public voice. Um, are, are on the left that you know progressive liberal media outlets you know left-wing media outlets you know give them sound bites instead of actually addressing it and saying no that's that's wrong these are this is what muslims actually believe you know they'll turn into this kind of what aboutery you know like it's, like for example when it comes to female genital mutilation when they get the chance to speak instead of saying this is what islam says you know, it's um, it was a product of its time, and he only commented on it for the people in the Horn of Africa, and you know, the vast majority of the Muslim world does not do this, and the ulama and the scholars have you know uh, unanimously said that the type of pharaonic FGM is completely uh, unacceptable. You know, instead of saying that, they engage in what aboutery and say, oh well, Christians in Africa do it too. So you know, and so people on the fence who are neutral, who are non-Muslims, they look at this and they say, "Well, here's here's the right. They have all this information on Islam, and uh, you know they're bringing me all this evidence. And when the Muslims are asked to comment on it, the only thing that they say is either A, well, non-Muslims do it too, or B, that's racist and they should be uh, deplatformed. So obviously, people who are neutral on Islam." Are going to say, you know, why should they believe the Muslims? Uh, you know, if we're going to act like that, so, you know, this is a break from that. Hopefully, you know, may Allah help uh, Hamza Yusuf when he does the interview. But I wanted to talk about, um, you know, how I feel about um, uh, the whole issue of you know left versus right, and where should Islam for Europeans stand in this regard? You can have whatever opinion you want, but in my opinion, I don't think that we should be following. The left or the right on this. I have my critique of both, um, and you know, when we, when Ham, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf does his interview with Jordan Peterson, it's very likely that there are many people on the right who will actually you know convert to Islam. Let's just theorize that that's going to happen. Um, you know, I don't think either side has um, you know like a, a viable way 
to bring these people into the fold of, uh, of Islam. And I actually think the left probably has a better grasp on you know, the reality at hand uh, than the right or the center, I guess you would call it, traditional Muslims have, you know, the look at the kinds you see at mosques. So it, the critique from the leftist Muslims is it shouldn't happen is, you know, um, Jordan Peterson is a white supremacist, and, which he's not. He's a libertarian conservative who believes in like evolutionary psychology and stuff. So um, and he's, you know, nationalists, have, <laughs> they, they hate Jordan Peterson. You know, they think that, uh, you know, whenever you whenever they say whenever you go on these white nationalist videos, um, the next video that comes up is like a Jordan Peterson video, and, and they say they're doing that to deter people from nationalism, you know, because Jordan P Peterson is an individualist. Um, but, you know, like for these leftist Muslims who are saying, oh, it shouldn't happen, you know, anyone who engages with these people, they're racist, you know, they should be canceled out, and all it's going to do is lead more violence. I mean, there's no, obviously, there's no evidence for that. I mean, all the statistics and all the science shows that the more dialogue there is between two competing groups, um, the less chance there is of war and conflict and, 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 and violence and things like that. Um, and um, and I, I can see where they're coming from because, you know, a lot of these people don't interact with non-Muslims. They don't interact with white people. Um, you know, they live in their own enclaves. And on top of that, you know, just recently, you know, in the last five years, they've all allied uh, with all these different uh, minority groups. So they have these entangled alliances where, um, you know, maybe before in 2010 or 2005, they could say something about it, but it wasn't saying, but now, if they were to say, oh yeah, let this interview go ahead, they would lose a lot of support um, from these groups that have been their allies in the past. So, you know, um, so that's what they're dealing with. Whereas for, non, for converts like us, especially white converts, you know, it's the complete opposite. I mean, we're not visible Muslims. We don't have to deal with, you know, the whole issue of, you know, being attacked as visible Muslims. But our family, mem family members are not Muslim. Our community members are not Muslim. Everyone that we grew up with, our entire field is, is non-Muslims. We have no choice but to, inter but to talk to people on a, and interact with non-Muslims on a constant basis, whether they're, um, you know, neutral on Islam, terribly negative on Islam, positive on Islam. Like, you know, like I remember, you know, I'm not going to name names. One of the imams, you know, progressive imams on Al Jazeera said, you know, I'm not going to sit down and talk to a racist. Okay, well, that's fine. No, I totally understand. I get it. I mean, these people you get death threats from. But, you know, what do you say to the white sister who converts to Islam? And then her racist father is like, um, you know, I want to talk to your imam. What are you going to tell him? No. I, I mean, if you don't, if you want to say it, say no, you know, that's perfectly fine. I totally get where you're coming from. But there needs to be someone to fill in, fill in that gap or an organization that can talk to these people and calm them down and incrementally allay their fears about Islam. Okay. However, I don't agree with, you know, what, um, you know, other people on the quote unquote, ah, right are doing either in canceling out leftist Muslims, especially when, you know, like in put, putting their deen aside for a second, you know, um, you know, a lot of these leftist Muslims are in positions where they've done amazing work on you know, the Israeli-Palestinian issue and they're bringing things to light that the general public doesn't know about. Um, you know, they're putting their necks and their uh, careers on the line by talking about this stuff. You know, and meanwhile, like, um, you have people on the uh, right, I'm not going to name names, they're exacerbating the issue by canceling them out. And that puts us in a bad light because, you know, you know, we're not a really well-known organization and a lot of Muslims on the left, we have to dialogue with also, are going to think that, you know, oh, you're just like them. But Muslims on the right and traditional Muslims that I'm talking about, you know, their idea is when someone converts to Islam, you know, we're going to assimilate them into the Muslim community. And that's how we're going to, you know, uh, get them acclimated. You know, we'll give them the tho, we'll, we'll give them the, you know, the, the lodging, we'll give them all these books, we'll give them all these elm classes, we'll give them the kufi. You know, he's going to completely change his accent. He's going to make hijra. You know, he's going to go to Azhar and do a four-year degree. Only a very, very, very thin slice of converts are ever going to be able to achieve that. And what's more is that when they do this, for the, you know, the very few people, African-American Muslims and minority Muslims, and rightly so, get mad at us and the Muslim community for, you know, white privilege. You know, like, because, you know, African-American Muslims, they convert and they don't get all these accolades. And I totally understand where African-American Muslims are coming from, too, because... Um, you know, uh, they were the flag bearers of Islam for decades. And now they see this white guy and he's getting all these accolades and he's going to be interviewing one of the biggest intellectual uh, figures in the West in the last 20 years. Yeah, I would be upset too. Um, so, I mean, those are my thoughts on me so far. Uh, let me go on to part two and explain a little bit more.